So Steven has had this set up for over two years now, and he's getting ready to take it down, customize it, rebuild it, um, and he wants some advice on a few things. He has four flood and drain grow beds. He has a 1,500-gallon uh, pond where he's going to stock uh, some of his fish at, and then he has a sump tank. The main dilemma in this problem is how large of a sump tank does he need in order to support these grow beds up here? Um, so that's what we're going to be covering right now in this video. The School of Aquaponics. So a quick overview of what we're looking at right here. We basically have a pond here. Um, that's where the fish are going to go. Then we have our sump tank that's um, uh, lateral to it. And then we have four grow beds um, that are going to supply the plants. And these grow beds are flood and drain systems, which means there's water that floods up in the bed. And then there's a, some type of siphon mechanism that is going to automatically pull the water down um, out of the bed and supply oxygen um, to the roots. So sizing the sump tank for is a question that a lot of people have because there's not really a lot of information on how to correctly size a sump tank out there. So um, we're going to go over how we would size this one, the sump tank for this. And this is different. A flood and drain system, the way we size this was totally different from the way we would size um, a continuous flow system. So let's keep that in mind. So basically the objective here is to be able to fill up all of these flood and drain systems and then still have water left in the sump tank. That's pretty much what we have to do. We have to make sure that there's enough water or the sump tank's large enough to give all these systems here water when the water's, fill, when the water's filling up inside the bed and we don't run our pump dry. So that's what we're basically doing here. So um, let's keep that in mind when we're doing this. So basically what we need to do is take the, um, find out the cubic uh, feet of each one of the beds. How much cubic feet of area do we have um, inside of each one of these beds. So the diameter uh, or the measurements of the of each one of these grow beds is eight feet long, then they're uh, two feet wide, and we have one foot in height. So when we multiply all these together and get the cubic feet, we come out with 16 cubic feet. So what we have to do now is we have to figure out how many cubic or how many gallons, excuse me, how many gallons are inside of one cubic foot. And uh, that comes out to about 7.48 gallons per a cubic foot of area. So what we need to do is take that 7.48 and we need to multiply that by the amount of cubic feet in one of these beds. So 16, 7.48 times 16. And that'll give us 119.68 gallons for each one of these beds if we were to fill it up all the way completely. Each one of these beds. So here's the kicker. The kicker is he doesn't want it filled up all the way. Steven, you don't want it filled up all the way. You, 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 you said you wanted an eight inch depth. That's how um, how much media you're going to have filled up inside of each one of these beds. So in order to calculate how much water we have at an eight inch depth, we need to answer uh, eight is what percentage of 12? Because there's 12 inches inside of the bed. So we want eight inches of those to be filled up. So eight is what percentage of 12? And that is 66.666666 and it keeps going. So we'll just have, we'll just say 66.7%. So we, we'll multiply that 66.7% um, times the amount of gallons inside of the system. So we got to convert this into a decimal and that'll give us 0.667. So we'll take 119.68 gallons if it was filled up all the way and then we'll multiply that by 0.667 um, because that's, that's going to give us the 8 inch um, uh, depth and that's going to give us 79.8 gallons per bed. This is at 8 inches. Now, we're going to be putting media inside of these beds. So what does that mean? That means the media that we put inside the bed is going to be taking up some of this space. So when we put the media in there, it's going to replace some of this water volume. So we have to calculate that as well. So typically, if you put like three quarter inch gravel in there, you'll get uh, it, that'll replace somewhere around 40 percent of the water volume. We'll stick the media in there. Uh, 40 percent of the water uh, is gone. So in order to find out how much water we just replaced, we need to find the complement of um, the 40%. So basically the way we do that is take 100 and subtract 40 from the 100 and that's going to give us 60%. So basically what that means is we had 100% water volume. We put media in there that took up 40% of the volume. So we're left with 60. So that's how much water volume we have left. So we'll take our 60% and we'll take our amount of water that we had 79.8 gallons per bed at the eight inches. And we'll multiply those two together to find out exactly how much water we have left over once we put the media in. So um, that is 79.8 times 0.6, and that's going to give us 47.9 gallons per bed with the media inside of it. Now, 
in order to find out the calculation of how much sump tank we need, we need to add all of these together, each one of the beds up. So 47.9 times the amount of media beds that we have, which is four. And that's gonna give us a total of 191.6 gallons total to fill up all of these beds when they're fully occupied um, with the media and um, at eight inches. So now what we need to do is, there's a rule of thumb for the sump tank. And what we like to do is we like to have once all of the water is dispersed through all the units and all the beds, we want to have at least 40% minimum of water left. Now, you can have, that's not a, a, a set in stone standard, but we don't like to go less than 40%. You can go um, higher than 40%, 50, 60, 70%, or you can go less, but I wouldn't recommend going less than 40%. So when we have all of the water dispersed, out of, uh, dispersed to all the, um, the beds, we want to have a tank that is going to have at least 40% of its water volume that is left over. We're getting our Einstein E equals MC square on today. So in order to find out um, what size sump we need, um, basically what we, the, the equation basically comes down to this. The total volume of all the water getting dispersed into the beds, which is the 191.6 gallons, is 60% of what number? And it's 60% because that's saying when we take it all out, that's, we're taking 60% of the water volume out to go into those beds, which leaves us with 40% minimum. That's what that leaves us with. You can rearrange this number depending on how much your minimum amount of sump tank you want left, but we're gonna do 40%. So 191.6 is 60% of what number? So basically to break this down, we'll take our 60% and we'll convert that into a decimal, which is 0.6 multiplied by X. This is the number we're trying to get equals 191.6. So we basically, all we do is just basic algebra, is just divide both sides by the 0.6, and it's gonna cancel out the, the um, 0.6 on the left-hand side, and on the 191.6, that's gonna give us 319. So this is the sump tank size that you need. So if you slap a 319 gallon sump tank um, inside of this build here with these measurements, if you take out the 191.6, um, water volume that is required to supply all those beds, we should have 40% water left inside of the sump tank remaining. Now, with that being said, there are more uh, calculations that can be configured into this, uh, uh, this whole calculation that we have, the sump tank calculation, and that's what we do, but you don't have any of the pipe diameters here. I don't know how long the, um, the, I don't know how long the pipes are gonna run. So these are, I mean, they don't take up much water volume, but they can take up depending on how much a piping you have and how much plumbing you have going on, they could um, cause some slight impact on the amount of sump that you need. So for your case, I don't think that you have super large plumbing going anywhere. So you can add on maybe a two to three uh, percent increase to this number and that'll give you uh, the, the pretty much, that'll put you right on where you need to go if you're doing it with a 40% minimum and um, supplying it at these numbers. So with that being said, this is the sump tank calculation for the flood and drain system. And hopefully that helps you out, Stephen. And good luck with your um, build and your aquaponic system that you're setting up. Woo! I had to do that this time. <laughs>